On the screen is the spectrum analyzer of the Analog Discovery 2. And what I'm going to be doing is actually trying to pique interest in a development. This is not intended as a tutorial for the average Analog Discovery 2 user. I'm going to be going into some internals in the Analog Discovery. What you see on the screen is the spectrum analyzer displaying the first, I think it's five, one, two, three, four, yeah, the first five harmonics of a one kilohertz square wave. And if you're wondering why that I'm getting such good uh, noise uh, levels, it's because I'm using ten a an average of 10. I'm not going to go into how to use the spectrum analyzer because this is really just an illustration of a situation because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on up here view measurements and you see over here in this window a measurement called THD you get to that by clicking on the add and then the trace that you, in this case I'm just using trace one and then, in this case, it's dynamic. And right down here, you see it's THD. That's total harmonic distortion. So why am I showing you this? Well, the, uh, what this is, is illustrating is that you can use the Analog Discovery 2 as it is to measure total harmonic distortion at a single frequency. What I'm going to be doing now is going through a series of steps to try to show how an ambitious uh, student or uh, engineer might go about uh, building a system using the analog discovery that will plot total harmonic distortion as a function of frequency or power or whatever. So basically I wanted to show you this so you see that you can do THD measurements now let's uh, go on and look first at the network analyzer and then finally we'll be looking at the script editor. Now I caution anyone that is looking for general analog discovery information here. This is pretty deep. I'm going to be getting into JavaScript and some things that the average user does not need to know. But uh, a developer would need to know these things in order to properly use this. And the reason that I'm going over this is if you have followed some of the videos on my channel you may know that there is concern over the fact that the audio analyzer suite has apparently been discontinued. And I know there are some people out there who bought analog discoveries hoping that they could use it for that but then when they went to go download the software they found that the website has disappeared. So I've talked to Digilent, and they tell me that while today you cannot get to the Spectrum Analyzer using the script language, that that will be in their next release. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to pique interest in someone perhaps picking that up at some point. So let me now switch to the Network Analyzer. And here is the Network Analyzer running from a kilohertz to 10 megahertz. And the only reason I'm using 10 megahertz is so that I can illustrate this is basically the fall off of the waveform generator in the uh, analog discovery. In other words, the, uh, the top trace, the blue, is the uh, reference and this is the output of the waveform generator. The waveform generator is the uh, source for the network analyzer and I'm only doing this just to have something on the screen. There's nothing particular about this. What I want to show you is a feature of the network analyzer and if you click on custom one right here you'll notice that it adds a new window, a new plot window down here. Then if you click down here in this space where right now it says real you'll notice that it opens a window called script. 
Now we'll talk about the script editor in just a minute. Right now the only thing in that window is just the word real. But the reason I point this out is you see that you can do a script inside a new plot window of the network analyzer. So why would you want to use that? Well, if you wrote a script, for example, that could access the network uh, or the uh, spectrum analyzer the, and compute total harmonic distortion, what happens here is this. You have a start frequency and a number of steps and a stop frequency. What the network analyzer does is, it, for example, in custom one, is it executes this script once for each frequency step. So, suppose you computed total harmonic distortion at one kilohertz on the left, and then you plotted that. Then the network analyzer would step to the next step, and depending on how many steps, how many samples you have set. It computes again, and you plot that, etc. So, the only thing keeping us from doing a THD plot is that the current waveform software does not access the spectrum analyzer. But if it did, we could write a script in here. And as I uh, pointed out earlier in this video, uh, uh, Tilla, uh, or I think it may be pronounced Atia, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing, has sent me a message saying this will be in the next release. So what we could do is write a script. And what I'm trying to do is to generate interest in someone doing this. So now let me go talk about script. And you may be interested in that just in its own right. So we're going to open the script editor. And I have expanded the font size a little bit if you want to. This plus sign allows you to expand the font size. And I'm going to do that. I'm also going to run this script just to show you what it does. And you'll notice that down here it says, please open a scope and a wave jam. So what we're going to do is go back to the waveforms window, open a, a scope and a wave jam. And then go back to the script window and click Run. And down at the bottom it shows running the scope and wave gen. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can see it better. And what you see this script is doing is computing an average of a series of acquisitions. It's changing the value of the wave generator, acquiring a signal from the scope, and then averaging that with all of the previous signals. It does that uh, 10 times, so it winds up with an average. So now let's look at that script, and you'll get an idea of what this can do, the power of this script language. Now, if you're familiar with JavaScript, this will look right at home for you. If you're familiar with C or C++ or C Sharp or any of those, it'll also look similar, as well as uh, if you have dealt with Python or there are lots of other languages. So what you see is a sequence of program steps in which you can specify a, an instrument, you can specify a channel for that instrument, and then you can uh, specify a, uh, a function for that channel. And in this case, what you are doing is you are setting the text of the mode window of channel one wave gen to the word simple. You're also setting WaveGen channel 1 simple offset value to 0 0.5. Then you're setting scope 1's trigger text to repeated, in other words, repeated trigger. 
Then you are running WaveGen 1. So you set it up here. You also set up the scope and you do a WaveGen run. Then you enter a for loop that includes a single scope acquisition. Then you wait. If the wait doesn't work, you return. But if the wait works, you fall on down through here. In other words, if the scope acquisition was successful, you fall through here, you measure, you do another measure, and then you print the middle value and the average value. Then you adjust the wave gen offset and you go through the for loop again. So once again, if you're familiar with uh, JavaScript or any of the C languages, you'll, uh, you'll recognize this as typical programming in those, those languages. So let's look just a little bit more at the, uh, at the script editor itself. Here is the help file for the script editor. I have printed it out. Up above is the uh, window itself with the code and the output. Now, I will point out that there is a script debugger available that allows you to single step through, to uh, step into or step over, and if you're familiar with B debuggers, this one will look very familiar to you. It's basically a JavaScript debugger. The key is to look in this section called code in the help file. The reason is that it lists all of the commands that are currently available in waveforms. And you may notice that you begin with an instrument which has an instrument number. In this case, the instrument is, for example, a scope. So you have a scope number. And then within that scope number, you can have a variety of uh, subfunctions, including, in this case, a channel. right here. So a typical uh, example, which is shown here on the last page, is the same one that we saw earlier, where we do uh, a wave gen. However, you may notice that the example here is not the exact same example we just looked at in the script editor. The reason is you'll notice here that it has the phrase data dot for each. Now, if you're familiar with Java, you know that the for each function will iterate through an array and automatically adjusts for the size of the array uh, as long as it's not a sparse array. But uh, you set up a variable called data and then you do a signal, uh, I'm sorry, a scope one, channel one, and data. And that acquires the uh, data from scope one, channel one, and puts it in a variable called data. Then you call for each on that data array and do the averaging by simply adding up all the uh, samples. So it's a slightly different example than one we just looked at, but once again for people that have done uh, script uh, JavaScript before, or frankly any of the C uh, C-like languages, you won't find this very, very difficult. So what I'm trying to encourage is for someone 
to look into this. They might find some use for the script uh, in other analog discovery applications. It really gives you a lot of power. But I'm hoping that when the spectrum analyzer functions are added to the waveforms script editor, that we'll be able to write programs to do things like total harmonic distortion and so on. So as I said in the beginning, this is probably a little deeper than most casual users are interested in, but it does show that when you dig down into the details, you can find things that uh, really give you the power to add all sorts of programming functions and features to the waveform software for use with the analog discovery too. If you stayed with, uh, with me this long, uh, I suspect you might be interested in going and trying some of these things out yourself or maybe writing some of your own scripts. And if you're interested in doing something with the uh, THD analyzer, then uh, let me know or let somebody at Digilent know. Uh, something, somebody like uh, the, the person who answered me was Atia. Uh, Caitlin has also been responsive in the past. I understand she's on vacation while I'm making this video, but she'll be back after the July 4th holiday. So uh, contact somebody at Digilent if you're interested in that. I would not like to get into the mess of supporting a program, but somebody who might want to do this and perhaps do it either as a, uh, a pro bono exercise or uh, perhaps to make a little money off a, uh, a small analog discovery add-on, I encourage them to take a look at that. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed the video and you'll have a nice day.